Hi everyone, today I'm going to try and show you how to make your own SVG cutting files for if you've got a brother scan and cut machine or a quick cut machine. First of all I use the uh, free software download Inkscape. It's a good program for um, all different types of applications where you would use graphics and manipulate images and things like that. Um, you can get royalty free images off a site called Pixabay which is free to sign up and you're under no obligation to donate any money or upload images yourself. I just put them up on the screen there so that you can see the spelling of them. Okay, so I'll just get rid of those. The first thing that I would like to explain is that there are different types of graphics and for your machine to cut a file it needs to have what we call paths or nodes so the, uh, there are raster graphics that don't have paths and nodes which are uh, your JPEGs and your PNGs and you can tell a raster graphic because when you blow it up particularly if it's um, a low resolution one when you blow it up it'll be pixelated and blocky okay so you need to convert it into a vector graphic now a vector graphic is a lot better quality it'll be more it'll be very crisp no matter how large you make it plus it will have um, paths and nodes to manipulate okay so I'm just going to zoom out out of this and show you how to do that so the easiest way to do this there's a manual way and um, a quick way that the computer is capable of doing. It depends what um, what image you want to end up with really. Okay, so you would select this by clicking on the selection tool, which is the arrow at the top there. Select the image and you go on um, path if you click trace bitmap I think for some people um, I think it's the older versions though some people may get a box coming up on the screen there for me it comes up in a panel at the side just there now if you've got your um, image selected if you click live preview you can see it comes up in the box there so you can have it like that where it's all filled in or you can uh, select edge detection it'll just do an outline like that um, if it's got colors you can um, choose the color options um, so I'll show you in a short while uh, to do a photograph you'll click on colors and it does so many scans but I'll go through that in a second okay so you click live preview you can remove background if there's a background to it that you want to remove but I'll also show you that on the photograph okay so you just press ok now on your image it may not look like anything's happened but what it's actually done is made a copy of the original um, graphic which in this case this was a JPEG and it's copied it and made a vector graphic as well so you can get rid of the raster graphic you don't need that anymore if you click this one now if you zoom in on this one now it doesn't matter how large you, you make it, it all its lines will be really crisp and it'll have what are called paths and nodes so if you click the edit node tool just under the selection tool you can see that there are red lines on either side of that black outline sometimes it may be a single path it depends what image um, you're doing so on this one it's given two paths all around the image and it's um, put in all these nodes as we call them these squares now these you can manipulate you can uh, left click on a node 
and pull it out and reshape uh, the image where you want or you can click on the path itself and pull out the path okay you can add nodes if you wanted to by clicking on the path and then you would click on the um, sorry click on the plus sign which will add a node in between if you click on it again it'll add more nodes in between two other nodes if you try and move these now see they're all highlighted they'll all move at once if you only want to manipulate one just click off into a space for a second and then click on the one that you want to uh, manipulate you can also also delete nodes by just clicking the minus sign at the top okay so you can do them individually or you can do a few at a time by left clicking and dragging a box over it'll highlight all the ones that appeared in that box okay and you can um, delete those as well okay if you want to smooth out any nodes say if you've got angular lines for any reason um, if I show you sorry it's on uh, spline I'll just show you in a second so if, you, if you've got a path like that that's uh, a bit angular and you want to smooth them out you can um, go, go on the node tool edit nodes sorry and you would left click on one node and then press the shift key and click the next node and if you click the smooth tool it'll just make it more smooth rather than angular little bits you may find that it does that when um, you do stroke to path which I'll show you when we do the manual version you can also do more complicated images again this is a JPEG file so if I go on um, trace bitmap again so it's still open on me on my panel at the side okay and again I'll just uh, leave it at that and click OK okay so again it's done another copy you'll find normally I think that um, the vector graphic is a bit blacker it's a bit more defined but if you're not sure just um, the quickest way is just to go on uh, the edit nodes tool and see which one comes up with the paths which is that one so we'll get rid of the old raster graphic okay now with this one when you click on the edit nodes tool you'll find that it comes up with hundreds of nodes you can simplify that by clicking on um, path okay and then go down to simplify and as you'll see it's not quite got as many nodes on it uh, let's try simplifying it again okay so it didn't really simplify it any further further than the first time um, you can delete nodes uh, where you want to so I usually um, zoom right in zoomed in it doesn't look too bad and you may want to keep all those nodes but I know these were little tiny cutouts uh, here so you could uh, left click and drag and delete those um, but just manipulate it by moving them about um, and minusing any that you don't want okay I'll show you now that it also works with a photograph 
okay so here we've got a colour photograph um, if the resolution of your photo is too much um, it may struggle and uh, crash the program as I've found out I prefer to do it manually when you get to this stage of um, doing an image I prefer to make my own um, but I'll just show you that it does work so again you go on trace bitmap you can have it as black and white if you wanted you can see how it's come up there um, that doesn't look any good if you have brightness cut off that's a little bit better but I will show you how it does it in colour as well so if you click on colours and you can change the number of scans or layers which your layers are like pages one on top of the other okay so I think it normally comes up as eight but you can change it um, obviously the more scans you're going to do the more um, paths and nodes it might have and your program might struggle um, I click remove background which it may appear that it's not removed very much of it at all but I think it does remove one layer at least I have tried this image before so I'll just click OK it may take longer um, than the simpler images OK so it's done it now at the minute it's all grouped together so all the layers are moving together and we've got the image in the background which we can um, just select and get rid of okay so to ungroup this we can um, if you click on object to group something together you'd click on group and to ungroup it you click ungroup okay so although it's all grouped together it seems to be moving together and grouped together you can also check that in your objects panel on the side um, your objects panel should automatically uh, be there because you you'll have listed your image before I deleted it that is so I've just got so many things on the panel um, okay it should come up with paths but maybe it's all grouped so just ungroup it all so that was object and ungroup and now it shows you all the individual paths and because they're all um, highlighted in grey I think if I tried to move it now it would still all move together so I'm just gonna click off and then click just one okay and if you go back to your image now you can remove individually all the layers that were created so I'm just gonna zoom out for you a second okay so there's one two three four five six and seven and the eighth one I believe was the uh, background that was removed okay so you can just select which ones you think are best you can keep one or two it's up to you uh, so that one to me is no good and that one So you're choosing the ones that will give you a, a good cutout really. So we're left with these two. You could ask yourself, has that one alone got enough detail on it? Or how, do you want some of the path on that one? So you can, if you want to keep them both, you lay them back over the top of each other. And then you would combine them by uh, left clicking and dragging. You go on path and combine. 
if you want both paths together to manipulate. Okay. Okay, so if we just wanted the dog, which you're likely to if you're cutting it out, out in vinyl or something, um, you're going to have to manipulate all these uh, nodes that are on this these paths. So click the edit node tool. Okay. And as you can see, there are a lot of nodes again. So you can simplify it again, like you did with the butterfly. Uh, path, sorry, simplify. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of the nodes have gone. And you can delete a lot of them all at the same time. The more, no more nodes you've got, the more it seems to crash. Um, it may just be my computer, it's very full of uh, photos and videos, so it struggles a little bit and works slow. You may find that the paths go a bit haywire when you've removed nodes, but you can um, delete those by clicking on uh, delete segment segment between two endpoint non endpoint nodes and things like that i'll show you more on uh, manipulation on um when i do the manual way so see to me hang on let's just put it back on the normal view so having got rid of all these bits as well um, you would have to consider do you want your machine cutting all these tiny bits you know so you'd have to delete all the little tiny bits that you don't want are there any um, bits that you do want to add okay so you you've just got to take all that into consideration and decide is that image good enough for what you want it to cut out okay so it's pretty good, but I prefer the manual way. So I'm going to show you that now. Okay, so I've chosen a picture of my dog, Bronte. Um, this one was too much of a high resolution to use the trace bitmap. It was crashing the program. Um, but I'll show you how I do it uh, manually now. Okay, so normally I start off by uh, making it more translucent so that I can see my work better on the top. Okay, so you go in your objects in the panel at the side. It'll automatically come up as image one and give you layer one. So you can um, just go on opacity and bring that bar down. I normally have it about halfway. Okay, and then normally I'll lock it as well. There's a little padlock sign there. Um, if you just click that, it'll lock it so that you can't move this image about by accident, which can happen if you don't lock it. So I'll just click that and then I'll click on layer one and I'll start uh, working on over the top of this image and creating a path for to tell me machine where to cut. Okay, so Normally, I zoom it right in. Did I go the wrong way then? <laughs> I think I did. Um, zoom in. Okay. So I'll just be working around the head. I've already actually um, done this project and made an SVG file of this, but I'll just show you quickly. Um, so the tool that you want is actually called the Bezier tool. So it's just there below the pencil and above the fountain pen. Okay. So if you click on that tool, it'll come up with. Okay. So if you've clicked on the Bezier tool, you'll have these options at the top. 
Okay, this one is for every time you left click, it'll do a straight line and you can do um, sharp angles to it. Okay, so you, it's probably difficult to see that, but I'll, I'll just show you in a second. You can go around in a loop and go back to the original node that was left. Okay, so it's created that. You don't have to do a loop, you can just do um, a line like that, just double left click when you reach the end of your path that you want, although you can carry it on if you wanted, and lengthen it, okay, so I'll just get rid of those a second. This next tool next to it, when you're on the Bezier tool, automatically creates a curved line okay and if you went round in a loop uh, sometimes you have to press the shift key if you don't want the other part of the path that was at the beginning um, bending out of shape okay the one next to that is called a B spline. Uh, I'll just get rid of this path a second and show you that. So the B spline option looks like you're doing an angular path um, where the red line is, but there's another blue line that is curving, and there are settings. Uh, to change how closely to the red line that hooks okay and when you um, double left click it'll get rid of the angular bit and leave the actual path that's useful for if you want to put um, text or something on a, a wibbly line okay I'll just get rid of that as well doesn't want to go Maybe I pressed the wrong thing, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so starting with the Bezier tool, I start working my way uh, round the head. I normally pick the uh, curving tool, but you can still do um, a sharp angle, as I'll show, I'll show you when I get down to the bottom of the ear. Okay. If it's slightly curved, you could just do lots of little uh, left clicks to go round a bend. Um, in fact I'll do that here, if you do lots of little left clicks it's gone round quite tight but if you want to do a really sharp angle you need to uh, press the shift key then left click and then it'll let you uh, make a sharp angle okay so I'm just going to go around this really roughly I normally do it um, even more zoomed in than this and um, try and do it as carefully as I can. Um, if, I've, if I'm doing a hurry dog, so like say if Bronte had a m big mop of her on her head, I would uh, keep using the shift key by going to the top of the her, let the her bend because you don't have um, her that's like zigzaggy. I'll go to the top of the her, press the shift key, left click and then start coming back down and when I reach the bottom of the her I'll shift key again, left click and go back up, shift key, come back down. Obviously don't make it all even like that, just you know, cause hers can sometimes bend that way too, you know, um, okay. That's all the mop she's getting. <laughs> um, so I'm going to press the shift key to come back to this because um, sometimes it just it just bends it out. It's not doing on this uh, particular piece, but okay, okay. So that is going to cut a singular path. Now I might do that if, say, I'm going to do a, a 3D picture um, such as uh, this one that I made. You can see I did the her thing on that. So if I wanted that cutting out as a solid piece and then 
for the next layer I would come in a bit to um, what is further forward okay and do it as another singular layer I might cut bits out of a layer that's got the eye in okay but if you want to use it for um, say you wanted to chemically wood burn this as an outline and have it attached to other darker areas so that when you're weeding it out of vinyl it's coming off um, as more of one piece rather than um, all little little bits or electro engraving as well I, I would do it like this so um, you need the uh, fill and stroke panel up so how you would get that up is if you click on object and click fill and stroke just there at the top I've already got it open because I use it a lot okay make sure you um, your path is selected and then you find the fill and stroke in your panel um, fill would mean that it fills the, pa the path the inner bit so I normally have it on um, none at first and then um, sorry I'm too far over there with the camera aren't I? Um, I'd normally have it on none um, but if I was to use a uh, coloured card and things like that or I want to colour it in and I want to see um, or I want to see what bits would be engraved or whatever I would maybe use the fill only for the purposes of uh, visioning what it could look like but for your machine to cut it it makes no difference but if you wanted to fill it um, you could just click any colour okay it makes no difference at all but I'll put it on uh, nothing for the minute your stroke paint is the colour of the line okay so you, again you can have none but I wouldn't advise that because you want to be able to see where your machine's going to cut okay so I'll leave it on red okay your stroke style if you're only going to have a single path like this it makes no difference to it being cut but if you want it to cut either side of this red line the same as um, the picture that I did before of the praying mantis where it was cutting either side of that black line if you remember you need to um, fix the stroke style as to what thickness apart you want that path to be okay so you set that I'll exaggerate it for a second just so you can see that how it goes thicker okay I'll put it down a second to more what I would want it to be okay and then you would um, go on path at the top there and stroke to path okay and now it will have a path on either side okay now for this image I would pick out all the dark areas okay like there and I to have it cut as one with this outline you have to um, manipulate the path and um, attach it to the new bit that you're doing okay so I'll just show you that now if I click on the bezier tool and I do this as a oh see it keeps saying uh, handle to cusp node it's because it's detecting the nearest nodes of this path I did before and it's trying to grab hold to attach it to them it can be quite annoying so um, this is the snap to nodes and paths tool so just deselect that it is useful sometimes if you want to um, attach it to uh, other nodes and make geometric shapes and things like that but in this case I don't want it to so 
So I could just do that as a loop, that dark area there. Okay. Now at the minute, it's totally separate from that first path that I did. See? And if you, I click on the Edit Nodes tool, it'll bring the paths up individually. If I click on that one, it'll show me the nodes on that one. Or if I click on that one, it'll show me the nodes on that one. But I want to work on them both together at the same time. So I need to left click and drag over the both of them. And then I click on Object and click Group. Okay. And click combine, sorry, not group. Group's a different thing. So I click on path and click combine. Sorry, I was giving you some bum information there. <laughs> um, group is more if you want to um, move or resize all your bits at the same time and that they all stay in proportion to each other with regards to size okay uh, combine is a actually um, making it one piece as such um, I'm not sure if I'm making myself clear with that but hopefully you can understand what I mean okay so I'm just gonna zoom in a little more because I'm gonna attach this path to that path and make my machine cut um, along here or all the way around and then back on this path okay so I'm just going to thin out that stroke style a little bit so that it's more clear okay actually I'm going to change the colour as well because you can't actually see um, I see the red lines very well. I, I still don't know if you can see them very well, but um, there's the red line, which is the path, and the blue is just the um, stroke colour. Okay, so I, you need to delete bits of path. So you, you click on the actual path, okay, on the path, and then you go to this that says delete segment between two non endpoint nodes and um, the red bit will disappear and the uh, stroke paint as well you can delete nodes in, uh, individually if you wanted to that could get rid of them it's sometimes quicker to delete the path because um, it just is. <laughs> Sometimes make sure you don't leave any little nodes behind. Okay. And I'll delete some off this loop as well. Okay. So this inner loop around here isn't actually a full loop. It's got a break in it here. And I want to make a break in this loop here and attach these two together. Okay, so to attach them together, I'm not sure if I had that, what I was clicking on the, the I'll just, just show you again, just in case. Um, so I was clicking on the path and clicking on this um, delete segment. Okay, to, if you make a mistake, just go on edit and undo. Um, your last action and if you change your mind again you can always redo your last action okay so to connect these two paths together now I need to click on one node from one path go across the bit that you want to bridge click the shift tool uh, shift key and left click on the other node and then you go on the one next to delete the path to uh, join the path okay so that's joined now don't forget the other side because you want it all as one well. 
okay so if I fill it now you can see um, that it's all gonna cut out as one piece zoom out okay so if I click fill and have it in red you can see that it's it's all one okay so I'll show you now the project that I did complete um, I did have uh, this and all bits in between you can go back on the bezier tool and do other floating bits that aren't necessarily part of it okay you can add more bits by joining other dark bits to the path as well okay so I, I joined that bit as well to the path and inside the mouth and things like that okay so this is the project that I created using uh, that photograph um, so I did it so that I wanted to um, electro etch and have these dark areas um, etched into steel okay so as you can see you just uh, weed out um, the brown areas no the black areas sorry <laughs> so, and these would be left as um, vinyl the brown areas okay um, you can also, I forgot to say, uh, create images using the shapes that are in the toolbar on the side as well. So, um, you know, you could have, say, a circle. Um, pick a square. Okay, you could join them together. Um, these are just objects at the minute and you would have to... Uh, convert it to a, a path in the end and the way you do that is just uh, click on path at the top and click object to path um, you can actually um, if they're overlapping um, click difference so you've selected them both if you click path there's all different op options I, I don't use this very much a difference it cuts out um, the one on top I think it cuts away um, and leaves the bottom one with a cut out and um, things like that but well, I'm not going to go too much into that at the minute maybe I'll create something for you and show you how to, to create an image using those methods another time okay so you might want some text as well so I'll show you how to do uh, the text no. Okay, so I'm just going to move that to one side. Okay, um, don't forget to uh, lock, put a padlock on anything that um, you don't want um, messing up, if you like. Um, you can create different layers, so if you've done a certain amount of work and you don't want to, um, say, drag it by accident or like drag, drag any of your paths by accident you can lock it and make another layer on top which is like um, putting another page on top so you you would just click layer add layer okay and you can name it what you want or I just let it number it automatically because um, I remember numbers uh, better unless unless it's like I, I put eyes and other bits certain bits together and things like that um, I might put eyes or something like that okay so right to do the text to get the uh, text panel up you would click on that T icon there and it will appear in your box in your panel at the side unless it comes up in the middle but like I said before it comes up on the side for me okay so it's just down there you can see all the, the fonts and the sizing and things and then you go over to this side and create a text box by clicking on the A just there left click and drag you can type in here or you can just go back over to your panel um, and click where it says text and then just type something in okay 
and choose your font I'll just keep it simple just keep on that you can choose your size but you can also um, manipulate your size actually on the text itself so you just click apply and it'll input into your text box what you've put okay if you want to change the size I don't know if I've already mentioned this but if you want to change the size of anything and you want it to stay in um, proportion height and width wise you would just go on the sizing up here which you can type in manually okay which I, I sometimes do if I want a perfect circle or, or anything um, but you click the padlock and now when you um, drag one of the corners the width and height will stay in proportion to each other okay so to put it on a curve like like I've done with this over here what I would do is go on the um, circle tool create a sphere I'm hoping this is staying in focus on the computer um, I've got a new camera and I'm struggling really to just suss it all out okay so I've created a circle if I want it a perfect circle just click the selection tool and it'll bring up the sizing at the top so it's not made it perfect because of the way I've dragged it so I'll just change that a second okay so I manual, manually put it in 190 by 190 okay so now I've got a perfect circle to put that text around the circle I need to select them both so left click and drag go on text and click put on path okay it automatically puts it down there for some reason so you want to spin it round to there and you'll find that it won't automatically doing it without doing something else first if you click on it you come up with arrows that are for resizing if you left click on it again you'll have arrows that are for turning but you'll find that if you pull one of these it doesn't want to go around the circle well, what it's actually going around is this little cross okay so I'll just put it back, back where it was a second so what you need to do is click on the circle and duplicate it okay so I'm just going to put that circle on uh, no fill because I don't know, I just prefer it. <laughs> fill and stroke. No fill paint. Okay, I think you have to do that if you want to remove any fill, do it before you've put the text on the path because it wouldn't let me do it. Okay, so you need to uh, click on this circle and duplicate it. Now you'll find that when you try and resize it, it'll, it'll just go to one side. So you need to um, click the shift key and then uh, do it. It'll automatically go into the centre there. Okay. Now when you've made your new little circle, double left click on this so that you've got the corner arrows and you'll find that there's a little cross in the middle drag that cross by left clicking and dragging it and put it in that little circle in the middle try and get it dead on otherwise your text won't um, go perfectly around the circle because this is your your center as though you had a compass um, and the point was in on that cross in the middle okay but you'll find I've not got it perfect but I'll just show you quickly now that if you drag it it'll go round okay if you want it on the inside so you want it here instead you click on the left circle and click um, 
flip vertically okay now it'll put it automatically here so what you need to do is click on that text again so that you get those corner ones locate the cross again it's not necessarily inside the box as you can see on this one it's on the outside okay and just drag that and put it back in that little circle that you made before and rotate it around okay and now you, you can delete that little circle you don't want that being cut in the middle of your work so delete that you're going to delete this big circle unless you want to keep it but obviously you don't want your Y cutting out through the you know um, but you can change the size of the circle but not yet okay if you wanted some more writing at the top or even inside the right way up obviously you can make um, spaces in your text but then this will be ups upside down you know if you did I love you space 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 uh, and worked it out so that it would land at the top um, but it's better if you, if you have it so it's readable or the right way up okay so you would cl click on your circle and du duplicate it again and then drag the du duplicate sorry <laughs> I don't know why I find that a tongue twister, it's a simple word to say <laughs> and now you're going to create its own text box okay so make another text box and put whatever you want in it okay so I've highlighted them both again I'm going to um, click text put on path again for this one now it's put it on the inside because if you remember I flipped the first circle i flipped it vertically okay so you can flip it back so that it put, puts that back on the outside so just click on your circle and flip it back now that's gone on the outside okay oh and again uh, create your own little circle in the middle to uh, bring it round to the top so i'll just quickly do that duplicate shift make the little circle double left click on your text get the little cross drag it in that'll do I can drag that, that round to the top oh where's it disappeared to hang on undo rotate it's probably gone behind I, I know where it's gone it's gone behind um, this work because this layer is on top I think okay actually just put it around to there for a second okay and then what I'm going to do is drag this circle oh sorry undo move just group it together so you're going to click on object and group Okay, just so that it moves over uh, all together. Put it over the top of the other circle. Okay, actually I'm going to un ungroup that again. So that I can move the text around. Oh. Ungroup it all. Okay, sorry, just bear with me. <laughs> okay, actually, it's, it's easier if you uh, move this text before you put it over the top of the other circle, it's quite hard to um, move it back around. So, just move it away, okay, because you, when you're trying to select things to group together which you don't want that group in with that ne necessarily um, you can't unless you go in and lock it okay but to save you doing that just do it at the side there so ungroup it so that you're just dealing with the text put it where you want it okay
um, we've got rid of that little circle remember you don't want a little hole cutting in your work okay so now that I've moved the text to where I want it just um, because I want to move it back over this circle I'm just going to group it again and I can put it over the top okay I'm going to uh, lock the proportions at the top okay click the shift key if you if I want sorry I'm not explaining what I'm doing very well because I want this writing on the inside okay but it's, it's the right way up but I, I want it on this side of the line I can't flip I can't flip it like I did before because it'll just go down here and if I try to um, move it around the circle it'll go upside down that's why I've done it this way okay so just shift key and there you go it's uh, it's inside now okay don't try and delete these circles yet you don't want them because you don't want your work being cut through obviously sometimes you might want to keep a circle in which case that's fine okay but First of all, if you sent this file to your brother scan and uh, your brother workspace, you'd find that the text doesn't appear, and that's because it's still an object. Okay, so you need to um, click. Don't forget to ungroup it from the circle, by the way, because if you just want to deal with one part of it, you need to ungroup. I just want to deal with the text. I need to convert this text from being an object into a path. So click object to path. Okay. If I try to um, delete the circle, I'll sh just show you. If I, if I try to delete this outer circle, you'll see what happens to the I love you it just reverts back to what it was like in a straight line okay so you don't want that that's why we're converting the text to a path first before we delete the circle okay uh, object to path just there at the top path object to path and now when we delete the circle it'll stay where it is Okay, and delete this one as well. Okay, and you'll also find that when you click on the node tool, each letter will have its own path. Okay. So it'll have its own path in its own nodes. And you can group them together if you wanted to, or combine them together. I find that if you combine them and then send and open them up in your canvas workspace you can't work on them individually okay it's different from group so I would pick group you don't have to group them to send to send them to work the workspace but if you don't if you because you know that they're going around a circle they're in a sphere so if you wanted to um, I don't know, cut it out of a, a circular piece of paper or something like that, you would want to um, group them so that they both move at the same time. Just show you. Uh, I'm forgetting what I'm doing, <laughs> object uh, group. Okay, so when, when you've sent it to your machine or you're in Canvas workspace now, um, you can move them about um, your mat or whatever okay you can also and I'll just delete that for a second you can also put um, text on a wiggly line like this okay so did that if I create a text box Okay, just the same as before with the circle, just select them both and click um, text 
and put on path okay as you can see you can lengthen this line if you click the bezier tool um, you know you can lengthen it if you've got more text that you wanted to put on you might have to actually combine that with that to add it but okay so that's just something to bear in mind you can also put it on a spiral which I'll show you now okay so there's a, a spiral shape you can create and whatever size um, your text is make sure it fits in between the lines of the spiral so if we put something really long um, I'll make sure it fits in just. okay so I just do the same again it's always just the same uh, just select the both of them I'm going to actually move it over here so I don't think I've locked this work that I did before so just drag it over same again text put on path and as you can see it'll start spiraling around I can go back into the panel and click uh, text and add more to fill in the spiral so I'll do that now okay so you can you can just keep adding um, till you fill the whole spiral and um, don't forget to uh, you, you can probably make the spiral into a path as well like uh, let's just try it okay I'm going to combine them both group and object path okay so all of the text has got yeah so yeah if you if you want it all to cut out say or if you're just creating something else you just want to uh, print this out or whatever but you wouldn't need it to be a path then I suppose but I've not really experimented with that as I've said I've just come across that in um, other people's tutorials there are people that are far more expert than me but I'm just showing you what I've learned up to now okay to save your work I just go on file you can click save but I'm not sure how it what format it saves it in that case I, I always click save as but I don't want this saving personally so I'm going to just get rid of this okay Um, because I just want my work so if I click file save as it'll automatically come up with Inkscape SVG there are lots of different options different types of SVG um, I've not used those um, I've got the embroidery extension so sometimes I've used the PES file okay and um, we just click save okay and then you cannot go to your uh, canvas workspace or whatever cricket software there is or program and open it in there okay so I just click new project click on the SVG icon choose file uh, normally you'd be looking if you've used Inkscape you'll be looking for the Inkscape logo with the correct file name whatever you called it click OK and there we go um, I can edit this I've sent this uh, it's ungrouped at the minute 
um, if you click edit you can group and ungroup here so I'll group it because I want this all to stay together okay you can enlarge it to whatever size you want to okay so um, obviously I, I coloured this in before yeah you can use this file for cutting this out you can use it for foiling um, so you would manipulate the colours um, so if you wanted the black bits foiling um, I suppose you would fill those, those with colours I'll show you that another time in a foiling um, video maybe but uh, you would just put uh, fill the area in the, area in the outline with the drawing function so whereas for foiling it would normally just foil the um, outline it will do it as a solid fill instead okay so when I'm ready with that I would just click download sometimes you, some of your image disappears but don't worry about that and then I always click scan and cut transfer I don't want to download it to my PC because the files are already in my PC for what I've created okay and then that will send it by Wi-Fi to my machine if you're not quite ready um, Oh, those bits mustn't. Oh no, it was just some. I thought it wasn't grouped then for some reason, but it must have just been a bit missing. <laughs> if you're not ready to send it to your machine and use, you can save it in here as well by just clicking um, project and then the little plus sign, which I've already done before. It's already actually saved. Okay, so I hope you've learned something if you're new to it. Um, I hope I've not made it too confusing I hope my camera's been in focus enough for you to see what I'm doing or that my explanation's been good I'm sorry if I've mumbled and waffled um, you know I'm not very good um, eloquent shall I say um, maybe my accent's a bit uh, strong for some people which I apologise if, but if you've got any questions or you've got any ideas and better ways to do for me to do things um, that I've not thought of then please feel free to comment I'm always happy to hear from viewers on their ideas and I don't know how you would show me, me your projects but I love to see other people's projects as well um, like I said I do have a Facebook page uh, by the same name as um, my YouTube channel so if you like this video please uh, click like and subscribe perhaps um, you can go to my Facebook page and click like on there too um, where I do have things for sale sometimes and you can also I think upload um, pictures of things that you've made on there which I would be really interested to see Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope to upload more videos soon on all different kinds of things. So bye for now.